I'm Sharon Caulfield, and I am delighted to welcome everyone to this lovely baptismal service, whether you're joining us online or here in the sanctuary. It's a special day for all of us when we have uh, our parish family blessed with baptisms and related visitors. And if you are a visitor, whether you're related or not, <laughs> um, you, we would like you to know that if you would like to know more about St. John's, you can take one of these cards that's in your pew and you can hand it to an usher or put it into the offertory and we would be delighted to get to know you. I've been asked to give you a few minutes of stories about the history of St. John's. I've been a member of St. John's since 1982, the same year that I graduated from law school and became the pro bono lawyer for the church. So uh, that's 40 years of stories, which I will not take all this time to tell you. <laughs> but we have all celebrated All Saints Day, and so it is an honor to reflect on a few of the saints of St. John's. Now, I arrived in the era of Father Jim McEwen. Father Jim's widow, Helen, is still here with us, and she's as gracious and lovely as ever. Father Jim was a vibrant guy who rode a motorcycle with a license plate that read, Vicar. <laughs> he parked the motorcycle in the alley under a sign that read, Don't even think of parking here. <laughs> Between 1968 and 1971, when the uh, country was in turmoil from the Vietnam War, Father Jim opened the church to the many young people who came to Boulder in distress. Some nights there'd be 50 to 100 kids sleeping in this space. Despite Father Jim's rules, there were predictable effects on the cleanliness of the premises. And this overnight policy endeared Father Jim to many but distressed others who decamped across town where St. Aidan's Father Pat welcomed them with one of the most beautiful Eucharistic voices ever heard in the Diocese of Colorado. So this set up a friendly cross-town rivalry that continues to this day. One story from that time is that one of the overnight guests stole the altar cross, the one up there. Father Jim felt terrible about it. I've been told that he and others were avid pawn shop aficionados, or maybe became avid pawn shop aficionados. And the cross was, in fact, eventually found at a shop in Denver and returned to St. John's. So you can see it right there on the altar today. The inscription dates back to 1905. The story's become a bit mythologized, but I love the idea that maybe Father Jim was running down the road on a motor named Vicar with a cross step to his back. <laughs> Father Jim was a church builder. He sent families out to church plant St. Mary Magdalene in North Boulder and St. Ambrose out on South Boulder Road. He tried to start a church in Lafayette, and perhaps it was the fact that the church planters had to meet in a mortuary that caused that project to die. <laughs> but Father Jim's his, his enthusiasm was infectious. One day he mentioned in a sermon that he just needed $150 to put in windows at the east end of the parish hall, and I thought, I have an extra $150. So you can see those windows when you head over for coffee sometimes after service. It seems I got off cheap because that was in the 1980s, but tag, you're it. And it is indeed our pledge season, so pick up your <laughs> pledge card and help us out. <laughs> Father Jim was known for short sermons. I recall a Christmas Eve midnight service when the church was filled into the aisle seats with the chairs and our great choir was leading carols accompanied by the glorious organ and we were looking at a long night here in the sanctuary. Father Jim got up and gave the shortest sermon on record. This is the night, he said, when we realize that God has heard the Hallmark Card Company slogan, when you care enough, you send the very best. And then he sat down. <laughs> My mother, a cradle Episcopalian, thought that was the best sermon she had ever heard. <laughs> and Father Jim was really good at finding talent. He mentored two of the first women priests in Colorado, the Reverend Connie Delzell, who in fact was the very first in Colorado, and the Reverend Nancy Martin, and launched them to highly successful ministries. He also partnered with Ellen and Penn Tate, 
Penn became the Boulder's mayor eventually, and Herb Fenster, who had come to Boulder from a Washington, D.C. career as a, as a housing lawyer. And they decided the Department of Housing and Urban Development should give them a loan to build the first aff affordable housing in Boulder. During the process, the St. John's crowd asked the HUD officials if there were any limitations on what the housing project could be named. And the HUD officials said the only limit was that the project could not bear the name of St. John's. So that's why we have the wonderful community known as San Juan del Centro <laughs> on the northern edge of town. And if you need a quick Spanish lesson to decipher the name, see me after church. <laughs> And that project kept on giving. After the loan was paid off, the project was sold to an affordable housing management company, and the proceeds were placed in a new St. John's Foundation. For the next 20 years or so, parishioner board members such as Amy French and Leanne Johnson Davis gave away its funds in small grants to groups like the YWCA, the Parenting Place, the People's Clinic, and many more. The People's Clinic, now part of Lafayette's Clinica Campesina, was close to St. John's heart in those days. Bob McCurdy was a nationally renowned pediatrician, an avowed socialist, and a People's Clinic medical director who sang a beautiful baritone in this choir for over 50 years. Bob was as Scottish as they come, and so for many years, before we thought there should be a special Sunday to bless our pets, we had a special Sunday to bless our kilts, or whatever special quinte or other family cloth needed a blessing. It was never a problem to get the kids to church when the Denver Bagpipe Band was here singing, doing Amazing Grace, and there was Scottish shortbread to share. But speaking of yummy things, it was during or maybe before the Father Jim years that the tradition of holiday fruitcake began. It was a joint venture with St. Aidan's, which was good, so that once a year we would all get together as Episcopalians and forget that some were more liberal than others. It is said that at the height of this project, the Episcopal women of Boulder baked over 3,000 loaves of fruitcake every year to be sent all over the world because with fruitcake it lasts that long. <laughs> and it was good. Um, if you want the recipe, check in with B. Haverstock. When Father Jim retired in 1991, we all held our breath hoping that the search committee and the bishop would do their duty to call Father Rahl Haverstock to be our next rector. Rahl had been a parishioner at St. John's, and he was the next best thing to Father Jim, but more contemporary. Where Jim had the motorcycle, Rahl was the owner of The Spoke, which was the coolest bike shop in town at the time that Boulder was the coolest bike town in the Rockies. I will always be grateful that Father Rahl introduced my son to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which prolonged my son's church attendance by two or three years. <laughs> Father Rawl rode in a Volvo with 200,000 miles on it, but he always rode on a great road bike. Unfortunately, during Father Rawl's tenure, we endured national attention for a very personal trauma that affected many in the parish, the murder of John Benet Ramsey. John Benet was in my Sunday school class and a delight like all those kindergartners. She was murdered on Christmas Eve, shortly after a big parish Christmas party had been held at the Ramsey home. This was and remains a great trauma for the parish and the individuals most closely involved. Father Rawl felt a deep responsibility to shepherd his flock through these events, and I know he had many questions for God and his lawyers about how, the best, how to be the best priest he could at that time. But he was a wonderful pastoral person who helped not only those most affected by the Ramsey murder, but also others who endured deep loss. I particularly remember as one of St. John's saints the sweet Alex Lewis, whose years as an acolyte were marked by his exuberant waving of the Holy Spirit eagle flag as he marched up the north, from, from the North X. During the 1990s, we also became an AIDS-aware faith community. This was our way of announcing in the vernacular of the time that all are welcome in our faith life, and we held an apartment in what we called the White House, which was over here before the remodeling, for a person living with AIDS. It was lovely to see our clergy, Andy and Ginny, themselves the parents of a gay son, come from their West Point Army background to lead a chapter of the Episcopal gay constituency called Integrity. 
Further, during the 1990s, we held a capital campaign to build out the education wing around the parish hall. That was a million dollar project, and Father Rall insisted that we tithe 10% to help remodel the carriage house on the alley at the First Congregational Church up at Pine and Broadway. And the tiny rebuilt carriage house was Boulder's day shelter for the homeless for about 20 years. But St. John's wasn't only interested in Boulder's homeless. Our magnificent deacon in those days was Pat Ladizio, who kept us, kept us well fed with wood fired pizza and paella from the family Ladizio's restaurant. It also inspired us with stories of her adventurous life from the time before God specially called her name. Pat became the executive director of the Colorado Haiti Project, now called Locally Haiti, and St. John's hosted the CHP offices for many years. Anne Scamrock, Eben Carsey, Lynn Gilbert, Amy French, the Reverend Bruce Swinehart, the Reverend Michelle Danson, Judy Reed, and many others found our faith values transformed by the experience of relationship with Episcopalians in this dramatically different culture. We even took the youth group to Haiti one summer. As it is All Saints Day and I have limited time, I was not gonna talk about our beautiful building, but it's Pastor Julia's fault. She reminded me that we have a fun take on the original saints. If you look at old photos of the altar, you will see that it was backgrounded by a tall green curtain. But Father Francoise de Chardonnay, another of our world-traveled second career priests, spurred us to build the beautiful wooden rereros behind the altar, which showcases the eagle of St. John's and the carved representations of the other gospelers. But if you look closely at the sculptures, you'll see they were symbols of the culture of Boulder, cowboy boots, a bandana, a neck scarf, and Birkenstocks. <laughs> Many of you who were here during the 10 years with Re Reverend Susan Springer as our rector, and as I've gone on too long, I will mention only that Pastor Susan was exceptionally good at encouraging lay ministry. If you had a good idea and energy to do it, she was game. The solar panels were installed under this rubric and the soup kitchen, St. Benedict's Health and Healing and the Whittier Pantry all flourish under lay leadership today due to her can-do approach. In closing, I would like to bring in a St. John St. Betsy Aspinwall who passed away in 2014. Betsy always sat over there where CJ likes to sit today. She was a fruitcake baker, a St. John's treasurer and the first woman senior warden. Betsy was the daughter of William Donaldson Fleming, whose name stone is over there on the wall. He was born in 1982, and he was the dean of the law school. And Betsy, after every Eucharist, would touch her fingers to her lips and put a kiss on her father's name stone. Her daughter Sarah and her granddaughter Mary have followed her, and I think it is really amazing that we have in living memory five generations of Betsy's family present within our congregation. When my children were teenagers, I would tell them that someday when our family is no longer in Boulder, they will be able to come to St. John's and have memories to share with their children. With the newly baptized today and our new rector to come, we have the opportunity to create new memories of service within our Boulder community and the wider world. I am sure it will be deeply renewing, and if the past is prologue, mostly it will be fun. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>